This is perfect. It's all flat bottom and then all of a sudden, <laughs> these big pile of boulders. Whoa! <laughs> that he's hitting a spinnerbait. I love that he's hitting a spinnerbait. What's a nice fish. Look at the black spots. They're a unique looking fish. It's like a paint job on this fish. I should not have got that fish, folks. Look at how fat that fish is. <laughs> he's kind of happy. Don't stick a fork at me yet, if you know what I mean. Uh huh. The Fish in Canada Show, brought to you in part by Sale, the Outdoors Superstore. Coleman, the Outdoor Company. Muscal, proudly Canadian since 1951. Cooper Tires, life's a road trip. Come on, let's go. And Prince Craft Boats, dominate the waters. Well, here we are at the eastern end of Lake Ontario two days after the bass opener. To me, opening day is like New Year's Day, full of resolutions and promises. In my case, it's pretty simple. Set the tone for the season right now. Go big or go home. Boating a five pound plus smally or even one approaching a six in the next day and a half here in this well-known bass fishery would set a benchmark for the next five plus months. And there's almost no better time than right now. It's 7 a.m. and I'm making my way from the town of Bath to the main Duck Island. It's a long ride, especially in the fog. These smallies should be just off the spawn, probably hungry, possibly still somewhat belligerent, and therefore hopefully aggressive. If all this works out, I could be in for a heyday. And the way the solar science is lining up for the next 48 hours, boating a beast is very achievable. I actually arrived late yesterday and had a few hours of daylight left and a stormy horizon looming. I figured I'd try to get a feel for the mainland fish so I could prep for the next day. I needed to have a plan for the big guys. Uh oh. Little wee guy, I think. Yeah, <laughs> That was a little guy. Put my motors off. So I'm out here on Lake Ontario. I'm planning tomorrow morning to go way out into the lake. But I thought, you know what? Why not come out for a little fish, have a little extra time, come out for a little fish in the evening, maybe get a few of those before supper. That's a nice fish. <laughs> and I haven't even got out in the lake yet. I beat the shore pretty good, but could only come up with one nice smallie on a drop shot. My overall impression was that, in this area, the post-spawn period was done and the fish had dispersed into cooler, deeper water. Not what I was looking for. But, with the water being cooler out at the ducks, conditions should be perfect. I've fished Maine Duck before, so I know the structure. The southwest side of the island presents a huge flat with a very gradual slope from the shore. I could also see that there were no fish between me and the shore. It was too shallow and too warm. I wanted to get a sense of what was happening, so my first pass was about 50 to 75 meters out from shore in about a meter of water. This spot consists of pale flat rock with veins of various sized boulders, rocks and pebbles, some of which are covered in algae, moss and grasses, so they appear much darker from the boat. I know from previous experience that these dark areas in the overall structure are where my boys are hanging out. This is going to be a very low tech expedition. I have no waypoints in my GPS. All I have are my trusty polarized glasses, which, by the way, are perfect for seeing in the gin clear waters. Love it. I think they're, I think they're pretty spawn, these fish, to be honest with you. You look at the gut on this fish. Look how fat that little guy is. Like, that's incredible. And they're just starting up. And if I can get them going on spinner bait, I don't care about anything else. That's my favorite way to catch mama, on big old spinner baits. See how big he is? Nice, nice fish. Whoa! <laughs> I saw a couple fish. These light colored guys. I saw a real dark one slap at my jerk bait. I'm gonna net these fish because I've got a real light fluorocarbon leader on my light braid. So I got like a 10 pound braided line, 10 or 12 pound braided line. Oops. Yeah. That and bigger today is what we're gonna hope for, folks. My friends. That and bigger. Nice. That's a typical 
Lake Ontario Duck Island smallmouth. Okay, I mean, it's about the same size as that one I got last night before the storm rolled in. I got a couple hours fishing. He ate my bait, but look how fat that is. You know what I mean? That's a, that's a healthy fish. And that's not very long, that's not a very long fish. There's a lot bigger than that around here. So we're hoping that, uh, we're hoping that uh, we can get this and larger. And was, hopefully I'll get a real dark one to show you the difference in colors. This is really light, really light toned fish. Most of them I've seen today are light, but there are some, uh, there are some really dark fish that come up here too. And you'll see the real difference. Look at those stripes coming out of them. Very aggressive. When they get caught, those stripes come out. That shows their aggression. Oh, bye, buddy. Look at that. After being cooped up all winter and yearning for my first crack of the bass season, today feels like total ecstasy. This is so much fun. I love this. I haven't boated my absolute hog yet, but I guarantee she's in this area. This is the coolest, folks. Paint job. Psychedelic smelly. I love that. So I'm wacky rigging these Sankos. And the normal tendency is to take the hook and put it through the body of the Sanko, in and out. Problem is, you, get, you lose a bait per fish. If you're getting down in baits, the numbers, the color is good, working good, and you only have four or five of them, you might want to consider put, using the O-ring method. It's a little different. Uh, you, you get an O-ring tool, and they have rings set, set up on them. There's a set of series of rings there. And basically, you just slide this O-ring down the tool until it goes on the Sanko like that. You can adjust it a little bit once it's on there, but just so much easier with a tool like that. And then, essentially, you just take your hook and you hook it through the O-ring instead of the body of the bait. And then the bait will not fall off near as much as it would through the bait itself. A little bit different action, but it still works pretty good. So we'll try that, see what happens. Venturing out to the Dock Islands is pretty much an all-day commitment. Even on flat water, the journey still seems like an eternity. And not being able to see your destination on the way out, that's just plain freaky. Once here though, it's game on. With the skies being overcast, my only saving grace for seeing fish is the calm water. Throw a one foot chop on top and I'm pretty much toast. This type of area is a prime example of where a sunny day would be much better for sight fishing. Get it. Coming up, dude. Get up. I didn't get a real good hook set on him. Oh, there he is. Oh, that's a nice fish. Yeah. Finally, I saw one and ate. They dig, man. They dig. They dig deep. Look at how fat that fish is, folks. Oh, there's another one sitting right there. I think I got the bigger of the two. I didn't even know there was two there. Let's get this guy in the... There is a smallie. That's a Lake Ontario smallie right there folks, and I'm, sh I'm sure that's a pre-spawn fish because look at the barrel on her. Oh, it can't be eating that much food yet. There's no way. Look at that gut. Oh, 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 oh. Come on, buddy. There's another one right there. If I had, let me see if I can throw my tube at this one here. The success I'm having here now is in no small way attributable to what started out as folklore about 90 years ago regarding the relationship of the sun and the moon to peak periods of animal activity. Nowadays, these are known as salooner tables, and without giving you scripture and verse, let me say that the greatest number and the largest fish that I nailed today were caught within the major and minor times of peak activity for the day. Just a little food for thought. <laughs> this is a small one, but you know what? That's cool. They're hitting now. Neither were, were spooked. Neither one really cared about the boat or saw the boat. This little guy here. How cool is that? He came cruising in on my release, and I got him too. <laughs> and now there's a bunch of boulders and rubble here. Could have been, that could be a spawning pair, you know what I mean? That could be the male. That guy had a scar on him, look at this scar. Yee, that's ugly. Little guy. I'm gonna put him back quick, because there's gotta be more. They're, 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 bundle, they're bunching up or bundling up or whatever you call it. There's more than one fish whenever you see one. Be cognizant that there's, there's more in the area. This is perfect. See, it's all flat bottom, and then all of a sudden, poof, these big pile of boulders. Oftentimes, Mother Nature has a tendency to drop a black sheep into an animal family, 
And fish, they're no exception. <laughs> nice. Oh, there goes my Sanko. Look at that. Throughout my life, I've seen all kinds of unique specimens. To me, it's just another element as to why fishing is so awesome. That is wicked. It's like a paint job on this fish. He's bigger than I play. I'm, I'm looking at him like he's a little wee thing too. Put my anchor on. Always got a bit of a, a weird lip too. I always like to say that's a true. Oh, this is the coolest, folks. Look at that. Paint job. Psychedelic smolly. Whoa, look at that. That's just jet black. Now that's what you call a blackie. That's, that's a, a black bass right there. And then the mouth. His mouth's all kind of discombobulated a little bit. Probably been caught or it's crippled at one time or caught and released. A couple of spots there and there, but that right there is so cool. Look at that, like a paint job. Love it. That, those ones right there, they're just pitch black. That's a good fish too. That's a nice one. See you later, buddy. He looks so cool on camera. Wow. Here I'm just sloughing them off like, that's ah, another little fish. Not so much, kid. Treat every fish as if they're a trophy. This one's got some weight to them. Look at that. Whoa. I'm fishing smallmouth bass on Main Duck Island, way out in the middle of Lake Ontario, and I'm now looking for a real stud of a fish. I've had an amazing day so far, and there's no reason why I can't tie into a mule. One I'll remember for the rest of the bass season. They're here. I can see them swimming around. Yo, boom. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love it. Look at that fish. Oh, that's a beauty. That is a good one. Ooh, got him. Ooh, that, this one's got some weight to him. Oh, <laughs> didn't realize I'm sitting there playing around like a, a two-pounder, but you're gonna see a little difference between a two-pounder and this guy. Mm. Look at that. Whoa. Now we're getting into early season smallies. Oh, look at you. Oh, how I love thee. That right there, folks, is what it's all about. That's what early season smallmouth fishing, that's what anytime smallmouth fishing is all about. But when you can get onto them like that, and you see them cruising around, they're hanging in their nesting areas, they're, they're, uh, they're revving up and raring to go. Look at that thing, wow. Nice. Okay, big mama. Look at the size of that small old bass, people. Woo! <laughs> Beba! Yeah. Don't stick a fork at me yet, if you know what I mean. Uh-huh. Talk to me. Whoa, six feet in the air. There goes your Senko, busted in half. <laughs> they get the best jumps out of these fish. <laughs> Another black one. <laughs> that fish bolted from 15 feet away. That fish just could put the cruise on by being so dark, even in those overcast skies. Give me a nice jump here, buddy. Even in the overcast skies, uh, you can see the really dark fish just peel for your bait. You know you get the right bait when it's uh, when they're doing that. You know, I gotta net them because the, the prince crab is a little bit high, folks. He's a little high. Nice. Look at that. This is probably a great time to do today's KLP too. I was gonna say knowledge would be the key because I know this area pretty good. I got some good buddies that I talked to last night, so I kind of knew the mode of the fish that were gonna be in. I thought, yeah, you know what? L location. Doc Islands, you can't go wrong, but you know what? It's gotta be, it's gotta be the P, it's gotta be the presentation on this one because as soon as I went to, to that uh, drop shot uh, Senko, it seemed to really dial in. And once I found him, went through a bunch of stuff, goby imitations, et cetera, et cetera, spinner bait, jerk bait, the whole nine yards, but the most consistent bait today is a drop shot at Senko. So uh, it's gotta be the, KLP has gotta be the P for sure, presentation. My drop shot Senko is rigged about a foot above my sinker, 
which will stay in contact with the bottom while I gently flick the rod tip up and down to keep only the worm moving. A 12 inch drop is a good starting point with this technique. What the? What the? Oh, look at how dark that one is. Oh, I should not have gotten that fish, folks. That fish fooled me. I'm a fool. Oh, this is fish. Stay on, because this is a, an extreme example of a dark fish. Oh, see, look at the way he fights, too. He's gonna throw his hook, but I know he's gonna throw it. I'm just catching him cruising around. Close to a bedding area, I'll say that. Oh, man. Whoa! Easy, Bubba. Bingo! This one, finally I get to show you a dark one. And <laughs> he's kinda hefty. Uh-huh. Hello. Now, I'm gonna... I gotta tell you the truth, you know, you think, oh yeah, way to go Pete, you're such a great fisherman. I had no idea that fish was on. Okay, I saw my line drop perfect down. All of a sudden I see a fish coming to the surface. Without feeling anything, my line's going in here. The fish is coming up here. He was swimming with it in his mouth. I set the hook. <laughs> Look at that thing. Oh, man. I love big smallmouth bass. Heavy, that thing is heavy. Mm. Whoa! Well, I've done what I set out to do. Caught a bunch of great fish, boated my fiver, and a giant pushing six. This definitely raises the bar and sets the standard for the rest of the smallmouth bass season. Oh yeah! Today's hot spot is a flat adjacent to Maine Duck Island on Lake Ontario. The waypoint on your screen will get you there. This is a pretty shallow area, but remember, I was fishing here the first week in the Ontario bass season, so the fish were active and moving as the water was still relatively cold. A pair of polarized sunglasses are essential in this type of fishing as an angler will have plenty of sightings of moving fish. Many of these fish will take a well-presented bait. Drop shotting a Senko was the ticket today, but definitely try other tactics like dragging a tube or fast presentations like a spinner bait or jerk bait. For more hotspots like this one, check out fishingcanada.com. To get to today's fantastic smallmouth bass fishing, I first took Highway 401 to Highway 41 at Napanee and headed south. Next, I turned east on Highway 2 and then south on Road 7 at Storms Corners. I finally turned southwest on Loyalist Parkway, traveled through the town of Bath to a boat launch on the shores of Lake Ontario. A word of warning, this boat launch can be unsafe with strong incoming winds. The Fish in Canada Show, brought to you in part by Ram Trucks, nothing works harder than a Ram. Stearns, trusted on the water since 1952. Mercury Outboards, number one on the water. And Outdoor Canada, Canada's only national fishing and hunting magazine.